Hi, through this video we are stepping into the popular domain of model predictive control MPC. In particular we are going to restrict ourselves to regulation, that means we'll want to bring the states close to zero. I'll best explain the essence of the principle using time plots, so I will visualize the evolution of states and the evolution of controls, and it's in discrete time. Uh, I will need the plots twice, so I'll make a copy here first, and then let's recap what we did in the previous video. We considered a scenario where uh, the state at the beginning of our control mission was known, and based on this initial value of state, we computed a sequence of controls over some finite time horizon, or time window, if you like. And we did this computation using the machinery of optimization. We did this computation such that the predicted, and I would like to emphasize this adjective, predicted state trajectory uh, satisfies some constraints and possibly is, some, is in some sense optimal. Now the system can either develop in discrete time or most often than not the original system is uh, evolving in continuous time, it's only controlled in discrete time. Whichever way, uh, the strategy, the, the control strategy is based on offline computation of some samples of controls, which makes it inherently open loop. Now, what can we do about this in order to make it uh, closed loop? Let's now consider that we are now at time t. So t for now for us is uh, present. To the left, we have the past. Now at this time, we are given the state. Either we measure it or we estimate it. And in fact, we replicate what we did on the left. We regard the current time as the beginning of our control horizon. And based on the initial time, we compute a sequence of controls. And again, we compute it in such a way that the predicted state uh, trajectory satisfies some constraints and is in some sense optimal. But now comes the crucial trick. After doing this computation, we are discarding it all. Well, not, not all, but almost all. We only keep the first sample here, which is the control that I need to send to the actuators right now. And then, as time evolves, uh, we move our window to the right <coughs> and our what we regard as the presence shifts to the right. And we, in fact, repeat the same procedure. That means we again measure or estimate the state and based on the value of the current state, we compute the sequence of controls over this finite time window, finite horizon. And again, we did this computation in such a way that uh, the state trajectory, the predicted state trajectory, satisfies some constraints and is in some sense optimal. And again, we discard almost all the results. We keep just the first sample in the sequence of control samples. And we again shift the uh, time window to the right. This strategy is called receding control, receding horizon control strategy, and this is now regarded essentially as synonym to model predictive control. So let me now summarize this formally. The whole control strategy is based on uh, repeating the following computation at every sampling instance. So we are minimizing uh, the cost function that you are already familiar with from previous videos. Uh, the quadratic one is pretty popular. The only difference now is that uh, the beginning of the time window is right now. That means at time t. The rest is identical. So now the, we are doing the optimization over sequence of controls and in principle over the sequence of states uh, over the horizon of length capital N. And now these controls and states are coupled by the state equation as usual. And the this state equation is initialized by the value of state at the current moment. That means at the beginning of the time interval, at time that we labeled t. We can also impose additional constraints on the states and on the controls, and that's essentially it. So pretty much identical to the setup that we investigated in previous videos, it's only that it moves in time. So we need to solve this particular problem as a quadratic problem, which we already know how to do from the previous video. 
but we need to do it at every sampling period and we then only keep the first sample of uh, the sequence of controls. Now, in order to get some insight, let's uh, discard uh, the constraints of the inequality type uh, temporarily. And for that situation, we already know the, say, analytical solution. Uh, we combine uh, the results from the previous section with the fact that we only keep the first sample and then these three terms over here. Uh, we know from the previous video that this uh, gives us the sequence of controls and then using this vector composed of one and all zeros, we pick just the first of them. If I now recombine these three terms into one and label it K, you immediately see that the MPC control strategy without constraints uh, is equivalent to standard linear state feedback control. So we can see even a formal confirmation that, uh, that uh, we indeed got feedback strategy. Now adding constraints makes this strategy practical. In fact, that's what makes MPC very attractive, but this is already trivial with the material from the previous video. And that's essentially it. So this was MPC regulation. And in the next video, we were going to extend this stuff to tracking.